It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> a beautiful day to be Deadpool. It's story time. Story time. <laughs> we got any fans of Mr. Rogers out there? Woo! All right. I'm a pretty big fan of Captain America myself. <laughs> well, uh, hello there. It's me, Earth's Mightiest Deadpool. Oh, hello there, you laughing little child. <laughs> Are you all ready for story time? Ooh, no spoilers. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're ready for a story, because I sure have a story to tell. Gosh, I love to talk. Today's story is a beloved bedtime classic mashed up with a very profitable licensing agreement. You guessed it, it's Cinderpool. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you can cheer more than that if you like. Oh, stop it. That was so genuine and non-prompted. Okay, well, that doesn't work. Let's see if we can find the opening words here. Look at these adorable pictures, by the way. I scribbled these myself. All right. Once upon a time. You know what? It just feels wrong when I'm doing it with myself. Why don't we all say it together, shall we? One, two, three. Once upon a time. See, isn't it so much more fun and interactive when we're all in this together? <laughs> For those of you that didn't participate, get your head in the game! <laughs> anyway, upon that time, once, Cinderpool lived in a big mansion with his very shiny-headed step professor and a bunch of hideous step mutants. The biggest one, Colossus, was always making up stupid rules that no one cared about. <laughs> like, please stop labeling other people's food in the fridge with your own initials. And for the love of Feige, stop hanging your underwear from the ceiling fan. <laughs> the other main step mutant, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, such a cool name, was always just texting and rolling her eyes. They were both super jealous because Cinderpool had a much much larger fan base. I mean, this isn't called story time with Colossus, now is it? One day, an expendable non-union extra came running across the mansion grounds, screaming. King Thanos was planning the biggest battle of phase three, the last truly relevant phase. Cinderpool desperately wanted to go to the big battle, but Colossus said no. Too dangerous. Cinderpool don't know how to be part of team. And then Colossus ripped up Cinderpool's nicest costume, and the Negasonic Teenage Warhead, again, such a cool name, made it explode into a million pieces with her mind powers. And then she popped her gum, so Gen Z. On fleek, Sigma, no cap. <laughs> Cinderpool was very bummed and felt very vulnerable and exposed. Minus 100,000 aura, as Negasonic would say. He ran out onto the mansion grounds, stumbling for dramatic effect. Hi there. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a big, strange, sparkly circle appeared. And from out of that big, strange, sparkly circle walked out Cinderpool's fairy, hairy god mutant, Wolverine! step through the sparkly circle, otherwise the audience won't know that you're here. Shut up. Fine. Yes. Oh, fairy, hairy, god mutant. I desperately want to go to the big battle, but my main step mutants vaporized my costume. And... Shut up. Uh, growled Wolverine lovingly. What? Well, I don't have a costume. I need to get to the big battle. Just get another one. Stop whining. God. Okay. Well, uh, after that very sage and somewhat Australian advice, <laughs> Cinderpool went off to the wardrobe department to get a freshly laundered costume before finally heading to the big battle. Cinderpool missed most of it, though, because he stopped for some delicious chimichangas along the way. You know, priorities. But rest assured, when Cinderpool got there, the Avengers were still winning. Captain America looked so cool and so ruggedly handsome. And meanwhile, Cinderpool's very hairy god mutant Wolverine was... I'm going to Pimps. <laughs> okay, bye then. That honestly checks out, really. Oh, uh, well, anyway... Yeah. 
I think there were six of them, not that that's relevant information. <laughs> I wonder who this fits, thought Cinderpool to himself, before trying it on. After some clicking, whizzing, and whirring, it adjusted right to Cinderpool's arm. Then, out of nowhere, Iron Man came flying in out of left field saying, Hey, take that off. Don't you dare take this sacrifice from me. I really don't want to be Iron Man until I'm 90. <laughs> In fact, I would rather be doomed than be Iron Man again. <laughs> oh, stop it. I don't even know why you guys are laughing at that. And then, other, much less relevant Avengers came running in too, saying things like, hey, put that down, you know, that's not a toy. Whatever you do, do not snap. So obviously, Cinderpool snapped. <laughs> oh, Cinderpool snapped a bunch, both physically and mentally. And then the weirdest thing happened, it was probably completely unrelated, but half of everyone started disappearing, and then reappearing, and then disappearing again. So many people were crying. Tony said I love you like 3,000 times, which was kind of weird. But eventually, everyone did come back. But then the Avengers tackled Cinderpool, ripped off his new favorite glove, and then when they went on to remake the movie, they CGI'd Tony's head onto Cinderpool's luxurious body, and it went on to become the most profitable film in the Feige Cinematic Universe. VFCU, as I like to call it. Still workshopping that acronym, feels like there's one too many letters. But that's okay. That's all right, honestly, because things worked out for Cinderpool. Because Cinderpool went on to start his own even more successful franchise. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have seen a few, huh? It was so successful, in fact, that Cinderpool was eventually invited to be part of the Avengers Endgame 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, in theaters at, well, some point. Well, that's the end. Game. You see what I did there? <laughs> okay, that sounded like fake laughter. I practiced that in the shower all morning. Can you give me a little better laughter than that? <laughs> oh, okay, all right, well, don't patronize me now. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming to another illustrious story time. <laughs>